Hello and welcome to Greece, Corfu to be exact. We're here on holiday at the moment, so it's not a full on landscape photography trip, but while we're here, there are some really, really amazing places in Corfu that I was really, really keen to visit with my camera. So I'm here in front of what you can see in the background here. It, probably you can tell it's quite an amazing tree. What you can't tell is that this tree is actually 1500 years old. So I just find that absolutely mind blowing that this tree is still alive today. All of the things that it's lived through. Um, this is an olive tree and all of the other olive trees in this area have been basically grafted from this one olive tree. So this is called Mitera. So that's mother in Greek, I believe. But yeah, basically all of the other trees are the offspring of this one tree here. So very, very special. I've been struggling to photograph it. It's been you know, a little bit tricky trying to get the right focal length, things like that. A few tourists have come up and actually climbed the tree, which I don't necessarily agree with. But uh, yeah, I have been trying my best to try and get the best photograph of it. I've taken some nice detailed shots of the actual bark formations, you know, where those, you know, quite abstract shapes have formed throughout the years. I find that, you know, really, really appealing to shoot. So I've got some Really nice abstract images there. Maybe there's one that will be, you know, the, the contender for, for best shot out of that, that little group that I took. But basically I'm still trying to get this one shot. I want to include, there's a, a tree on the, on the left hand side of the frame over there and then a tree on the right. So I want to include both of them to kind of show, you know, the wider landscape and the fact that, you know, I think it's quite interesting that all of these other trees here have basically come from this one 1500 year old tree. So yes, I'm trying my best. I think I'm nearly there. I've got the Sony a6700 and the Tamron 18 to 300 on with a polarizer. At the moment, it's looking incredible. The polarizer is just bringing out those greens ever so slightly. It was completely overcast before, but now we are getting a little bit of light coming through, which is just kissing the top of the tree, which I think gives the image a, a little bit more dimension. So I'll have another go, try and get this composition nailed down and then yeah, move on to, to somewhere else. Um, I think we're going to shoot flamingos and hopefully go into a, like a lagoon, which is quite good for nature. So yeah, hopefully get some wildlife images and that kind of thing. But yeah, it's fantastic. Corfu is absolutely stunning so far. My second Greek island that I've been to and it, absolutely loving it. But first things first, let's get this image in the bag because it has been a struggle. Been tinkering around with it for about 40 minutes now. So yeah, let's finally get this one sorted. So what is proving to be so difficult? There's a couple of things actually. It's this sign here is really winding me up actually. I have tried to move it. I know I probably shouldn't, but it's it's got a bolt. You know, I probably could undo it if I wanted to, but you know, really and truly I shouldn't be dismantling signs and stuff just to get the photo. So that will probably have to be cloned out in Photoshop, unfortunately. But the general rule that I go with is if you could do it in real life, you can do it in Photoshop um, in terms of like getting rid of things, you know, that you don't want to do things unnecessarily and change the actual way that things looked in real life. So if I wanted to, I could move that. So I will just get rid of it in Photoshop, I think. Well, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, should be fairly easy because the ground behind it is quite sort of just, you know, just scrubby ground. So I should be able to clone that out with no problems. The other thing, uh, if you look up here, the actual tree itself, it's really difficult to get it so it's nice and balanced because the, the crown is actually slightly off center from where this main stem is. So it is very, very tricky to get it exactly how I want it. And just trying to make sure that, you know, that, that middle branch in, 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 you know, kind of completing the crown that goes out towards the back there, that isn't lost. You know, it's, it's really easy to go too far to the left or to the right. And then that middle branch ends up being blocked behind one of the branches in the foreground. So, or, or in front of it in the crown. So that has been a struggle as well, but I think I've got exactly what I want. F11, everything's nice and sharp. 
like I said, the only thing that is, is a downside with the image is the fact that this sign is in it. So Photoshop is going to be my best friend in this occasion. So yeah, I'm going to try and clone that out in Photoshop and hopefully that will be all right. Because yeah, other than that, I think this is a fantastic image and it is definitely a fantastic tree and a amazing subject to, to shoot really. So yeah, that's probably this location done. You know, I could probably stay here all day, to be honest. I love these olive groves, you know, they're absolutely stunning. Literally all the trees, every direction that you look in, there's a, a photo to be taken. So yeah, I definitely could stay here all day, but the only trouble is I'm getting bitten to shreds by ants and other biting insects and mozzies and things like that. So yeah, we'll move on and uh, see where it takes us. Oh, flamingos, that's what's coming next. Fingers crossed, anyway. went to the spot where the flamingos were supposed to be which is only about a 10 minute walk from where I am now. No flamingos to be seen, quite nice sort of scrub land and a big lagoon and stuff. It's supposed to be really good for wildlife but there wasn't anything to be seen when we were there so now making the best of it and uh, gonna shoot sunset which is just popping off behind me at the moment. It is 7.11 so I've got about 40 minutes until the sun is gonna set. Um, I've got a composition that I'm really really happy with. It sets the scene really well for where I am. What I've got is, uh, I say they're dunes but they're more like rock formations actually. So you can see sort of just behind me there, there's these sort of very um, well very curvy lines through the through the image and these sandstone rock formations which yeah I suppose some of them are, are pretty dune but then other bits are, are more rocky and craggy so I've got the camera set up just there so I've got the a6700 and I've for a change got the Sigma 16 millimeter on there which is my least used lens but actually uh, the image quality that comes out of it is so fantastic oh I'm falling <laughs> um, I'm just sort of very precariously perched on the side of this ledge here I've conveniently got all of my camera gear just there but uh, I'm at the moment just perched on this ledge um, trying to keep balance as best I can but yeah essentially I'm just going to wait for the sunset I've got these three sort of large hills or mountains just up in the image there you can see look at the drama in the sky so hopefully we're going to get a decent sunset it would be fantastic if we do you can see over to the what, where is that then that's sort of like the north Northwest or no, well, I'm not sure <laughs> over that way anyway the Sun is going to set and it's hopefully going to come down be below these clouds and bathe this scene in a lovely golden light before it sets which would be fantastic but yeah essentially that's it pretty simple got the nice leading lines of the rock formations going through the scene there and leading to the uh, to the final mountains or big hills in the distance there and uh, in the mid ground we've got this well it looks like scrub ground from here let me turn you back around again so yeah it looks like scrub ground but it's actually juniper i think it was fin will you <laughs> There we go. Um, it's Phoenician juniper, so it's similar to the juniper that we have in Britain, but it's uh, got bigger berries from what I can see. So, yeah, quite quite an interesting little landscape here. And then past that is a is that lagoon where the flamingos were supposed to be, but never turned up. So yeah, I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna take a shot actually while while we're talking because it's changed quite a lot, and the clouds have 
are constantly moving so yeah it's probably going to be a case of just keep shooting as the next sort of 40 minutes go on and uh, hopefully we get a decent sunset it's looking promising fingers crossed from what i can see the the sky is looking like it's going to light up and uh, we're going to get a lovely golden light uh, just before sunset which is going to be perfect yeah i'll catch up with you as time goes on right i may have to oh, i can't even look that way i may have to change tactics here there is a real storm coming in basically and I'm getting blasted with sand at the moment. I don't even know if you can hear this because it's super windy now. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I just don't want to ruin my gear to be honest with you. There's a lot of sand that keep, keeps coming in waves so poor. Oh. What do I do? <laughs> uh. The things we do for photography, eh? <laughs> so as you can probably hear, the wind is not over yet, but that hopefully, fingers crossed, is the worst of the sandstorm that's been through. Um, everything got a little bit of a blasting. I'm hoping my gear's all right after all of that. But uh, basically, sunset is just about to happen, hopefully, behind me see there's some colors in the sky starting to form um, didn't get any of the light as the Sun went down beneath the clouds it didn't actually go beneath the clouds there was a, um, a big bank of you know lower level cloud that moved across the scene uh, and ended up blocking out the Sun so that was a little bit of a shame it meant that my foreground here didn't get bathed in a nice golden light but it is still looking incredible I'm really really happy with this scene I may have just taken the shot that I will use as my final one I've been taking various ones as the evening's been progressing but essentially I really liked that one that I just took there was a, a real V shape to the clouds in the sky which sort of direct the viewer down to towards those mountains and you've got the foreground there directing the, the viewer to the mountains from the land as well so it's kind of everything all points to those those mountains or hills in the middle of the scene there yeah really happy with this be lovely if we get some nice purple and pinks in the sky don't know what do you think something may happen but yeah it's been a lovely evening of photography here and that was that so the sunset shoots over got my shot in the bag I'm really really happy with it actually I think it looks fantastic on the back of the screen give you a sneak peek there <laughs> Yeah, looks really, really good. I'm really happy with it. The only thing is I may have to do a little bit of tidying up in my foreground just because there's a few little footsteps there where people have trodden before, but it's just sand. So I'll, uh, I'll tidy that up in Photoshop if I have to. But yeah, really, really happy with it. It tells the scene really well and uh, got quite a decent, colorful sunset in the end. So yeah, let me know what you think of the final image. It wasn't what I had planned for this evening with the flamingos. You know, that was the whole reason we actually came to this area. But still fantastic to get a nice sunset shoot. And then my first sunset shoot for Corfu under the belt. So we've got a few more days here, so we'll see what happens. See if there's some more opportunities for photography over the next few days. Be good if there is. So join me in the next one. Uh, let's see what we can find in the rest of Corfu. So I need your help with this one guys. This first image was taken earlier in the evening and has some stunning storm light coming through and bathing the scene, as well as the sky having a much more moody feel to it, so I really really love this first shot. But then this next image has that V shape in the sky, leading the viewer down to those mountains in the centre of the frame. And as the evening progressed from golden hour to sunset to blue hour, the sky showed a little bit more colour and the lighting became so much more balanced. So I can't make up my mind. I don't know which one of these images is better, but let me know in the comments down below. Do you prefer the first shot or the second one? So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a subscribe. It really, really helps the channel and uh, you can be the first to know about anything new that's happening, uh, any of the other photo shoots and gear that I'm reviewing. You'll be the first to know. So yeah, make sure you subscribe and like it. It really helps the channel. Thank you. Bye.